All right, my ma'am. What's your thing? Hmm? Who are you? Why, hello there, sir. Good day to you. Many. Excuse me? I presume that you are Kazumu, Kazuma Kiryu-sama, formerly of the Tojo clan, ex-Dojima lieutenant family advisor. Who are you? Thank you ever so much for asking, dear sir. Furthermore, I apologize in advance for any confusion I may cause with my forthcoming statements. Firstly, I was born in the Asakusa district of Tokyo. Secondly, regarding my occupation, I am a retainer to the Atobe family's third patriarch, Kaizo Atobe-san. Thirdly, I would like to introduce myself. My surname is Yoshikawa. My given name is Ichirota. Though, if it pleases you, my compatriots refer to me as Ichi. As you can see, I am but a fledgling who has caused some measure of annoyance to my superiors, so I hope to atone. May I also state for the record that I am honored to have made your acquaintance and hope to call you a friend. What do you want? And what does the Atobe family want with me? <laughs> Aha, I'm glad you asked, dear sir. Well, in the interest of honest disclosure, you see, that young fellow, Takashi, seems less than reliable. Hmm, yeah, I guess he kind of was a little punk. I can see why you would be worried. As such, I have been charged with ensuring the young couple's well-being, sir. But I haven't the faintest notion of their whereabouts. So, Kiryu-san, could you please help me find the young lady? Well, I guess I'd recognize her if I saw her. I would feel ever so reassured if one who knew this town so well could help me locate the young lady. Sure, I can help. Uh. Sure. I can help you out. <laughs> I knew you would help me, Kiryu-san. My patriarch was right. You really are the paragon of honor and humanity. Well, if you would, if you ever see the lady, I would like for you to give her these to her and the young lad she fancies. Matching mashiya, mashiko yaki mm. bowls. Hmm. What's this? If you give them to the young lady, she'll understand precisely what it uh. is. I see. This is just a handoff, Boy. then. Indeed. Kiryu-san, I'm counting on you. Not that I have any idea where I'd find her. Maybe I could start with checking out where I saw them last, which means asking around at Club Debola. Mm-hmm. So that's where we're gonna go now. So tragically, we're actually gonna have to do... Pocket Circle. Wait, what am I checking over here? Oh. It was this. It was the manhole. I see. I just saw a check in the corner. I was like, what am I saying? So this ties in nicely to what I was about to say. So tragically, we're going to have to do pocket circuits soon because in the interest of being honest, I've had to, I'm having to replay a fairly large chunk of this game because the audio I had recorded off the previous set, uh, recording session was uh, basically unusable. So we've got, I gotta start again. And what I learned was I got to SSS rank with Majima, and it just kind of abruptly stops. So I'm guessing we have to do all the stuff from the emails to like fill out the thing pretty much, because it's one of the things in the, the tree is settle the score with Majima. And I, seeing as it stops progressing after the next like set piece with him, I'm guessing that means do all the other stuff. Now, tragically, two of the side quest things with Majima are do Pocket Circuit with him and play Meso King with him. Two things I have a very low interest in. So tragically, though, we'll have to do so. And you have to basically do the whole Pocket Circuit thing to realistically beat Majima on, his, on the like third race with him. So, it's almost time to go to the Forbidden Zone. I know. It's, it's very upsetting to me. So, yeah, there you go. It's almost time to do that if you've been, like, really, really excited to see what's going on with those fucking toy cars. Oh, God. Anyway, let's go to Devola. Did you know? There's a... Do you know the man 
called Hanya Man from this photo here, sir. He's a fighter in a coliseum our boss likes. I don't even know where the coliseum is in the first place. He said he wanted you to see... He said he wanted to see you fight Hanya Man. The boss was smiling oddly, so I think he's up to something. Be careful. So Hanya Man could appear in the Coliseum now, and that's also one of the things that's on the list of things to do to check off all the Majima side completion. Which is l much less tedious than Play Pocket Circuit but is still fairly tedious at the same time. Conveniently, though, I haven't finished doing everything for Komaki, so I have to do that regardless. I forgot something that I need to buy to finish this side quest. Hold on. Hey, dude! Oh, hell no. It's you again. Hmm. What's your problem? You stalking me or something? Yeah. No. Why would I do that? Whatever. You're crazy, man. What are you doing here? Oh, I'm looking for Takashi. Know where I could find him? Hmm. And what if I did? So you're saying you won't tell me for free? <laughs> Damn straight. Nothing in this world is free, Holmes. What do you want, then? Uh. Hmm. Tell you what. You bring me a tuna and egg sandwich, and I'll tell you where Takashi is. Tuna and egg sandwich? I actually have that. How did I know I needed this? Well, I just have an intuitive sense for when food items will be needed in a quest line. Actually, just this is one of the things I'm replaying. Is this what you wanted? <laughs> Score! This sandwich is my jam! I'm happy for you. Now, where's Takashi? Oh, I almost forgot. I saw him heading into the batting cages with his girl. Back to the batting cages, huh? Got it, thanks. Heh. <laughs> Anytime, Holmes. Great talk. So let's look for the other side quest that was in here at the same time. And by look for, go, I mean go exactly to where it is. Hey, it's right over here. I know. Um, excuse me? Can I ask you something? Do you know where I could find the platform here? A platform, huh? I don't think this club has one. Oh, really? How sad. I was hoping they'd have one here. Sorry to disappoint, but a platform? That's nostalgic. They were pretty trendy in the disco clubs during the bubble economy. Oh wow, you were in the disco clubs during the bubble? Mm -hmm. Huh. Yeah, back when I was 20 years old or so. I used to be a regular, popping in to dance my cares away. Oh wow. Can you tell me more about what it was like to go to a disco club in the bubble? Well, the women were dancing in these gaudy, tight dresses and the men would hit on them relentlessly and everyone drank like fish. <laughs> it was kind of one long drunken party. I see. That must have been quite a sight uh. to behold. Yeah, but why are you so interested? Oh, there's a role for a, up for a movie set for a movie set in the disco club of the bubble economy era, era. The movie is called Disco Queen of Love. I'm an aspiring actress and I'm going to audition for the lead role. I see. So you're trying to get to learn about the time period. Yeah, I heard disco clubs had platforms during the bubble. I wanted to see one in person, so I came here, but... I turned 20 this year, so I was just a kid during the bubble. But if I want to play a part of someone... A part of someone who really lived in the, that era convincingly, I figured I'd try to learn about the bubble economy myself. I see. That's pretty dedicated. <laughs> Thank you. I've always wanted to be an actress, ever since I was a little girl. That's why I don't cut corners, even when it comes to the smallest details. Huh. Well, good luck. I hope you can nail down the era somehow. Thank you. Oh, sorry. I should have introduced myself. I'm Aya Yabuki. And you are? Name's Kiryu. So, you were a regular at the disco clubs during the bubble, right? Hmm. Yeah, I guess. Um, if you don't mind, would you mind telling me more about what it was like back then? Many. What? <sighs> If I can get real details from someone who actually lived the bubble economy, I could nail that audition. The stories of someone like you would help me recreate a true bubble economy persona. Here's a fun game. Just, you know, have have a drink every time they say bubble economy during this exchange. Well, I see your point, but why ask me? Your parents were probably aware of how things were. My parents are a couple of country folks. They never left their town, and they wouldn't know a thing about disco clubs or the bubble. I see. So, can I rely on you to tell me a little more about it, Kiryu-san? Please help me. Sure. Sure, I guess I can make some time. Thank you very much, but I wouldn't even know where to start. What kind of information about the bubble economy would you want? Hmm, let's see. 
Oh, I heard people did some weird stuff to hail a cab. What did they do? Oh, I remember that one. Uh. Really? Cabs were pretty popular back then. People would stay out late partying in a disco club or something, and the cabs were the best way to get back home. It got kind of competitive, so people would do interesting things to get the cabbie's attention. Like what? I'm trying to remember what we did to hail cabs. I will, you know, it wasn't too hard to figure this one out by process of elimination. Because, you know, body slamming the cabs would no doubt get attention. But no, we waved 10,000 yen bills. We used to flash our 10,000 yen bills at the cab drivers. Huh? How would the cab driver have seen it? Well, we'd hold them in our hands and wave them around like this. What? Is that really what people did? <laughs> That's too funny. Back then, cab drivers had the luxury of picking their passengers. If the destination was too close, they'd actually refuse to take the job. So we'd wave 10,000 yell bills to indicate that we were going far away and willing to pay the drivers. Are you serious? Wow, the bubble economy was so intense. But that's really good info to know. I think that tells me a lot about the lifestyle. Huh, that's good. But I need to know more. Please tell me more about the bubble economy uh. era. She's basically going down the RPG quest line, like, dialogue tree right now. Tell me more about the mass relays. Tell me more about the Protheans. What else do you want to know? Let's see. I'm really curious about how relationships worked. I'm sure dating was quite different then. Hmm, dating, huh? Thinking back on it, one of the popular things guys did was drive women around in their cars. You mean like, they take their girlfriends places? That sounds pretty normal. Guys still take their girlfriends places today, you know. Yeah. No, see, most of the time they weren't even dating yet. Women would ask guys to drive them around, but most of those guys ended up never making it past friends. What? So men went through the trouble of driving women around even when they weren't together? Uh. Yeah, especially if they had a nice car. A nice car would mean they had money. But since everyone had money, men had to really go out of their way to impress girls. Wow, I see. So men had to work really hard to get those girls' attention then. Now that I think about it, didn't those guys have kind of a silly nickname? I think I remember hearing about it once. What was it? Runner boys? Doggy uh. boys? No. Oh yeah, they did have a name. I knew it! Do you remember what it was, Kiryu-san? It was a name, name that made fun of them for driving women around just because they told them to. It was Leg Lads! I remember now. It was Leg Lads. <laughs> yeah, that's it! Leg Lads! But why did they call them that? Because these women used them as a means of transportation. Kind of like using the men as their legs. Oh, I see. But it's a little sad they got made fun of when they were just trying to do something nice. Yeah, you're right. Women had lots of nicknames for men back then. There were grub buds, gift guys, and keeper cuns. Men got pretty carried away with all the money they had, but women weren't innocent either. If they were the type to get lots of attention, they went overboard too. So the economy was good, and everyone was high-spirited to a fault, huh? But that story really helped me understand the mindset of young men and women at the time. Huh, that's good. Yeah, please tell me more about the bubble economy era. I guess I could tell you about the disco clubs you were saying you wanted to hear about. Oh, finally! This is the setting of the movie I'm auditioning for, so I'm really looking forward to this. The disco club was pretty similar to this club, actually. It was a dance floor, and off to the side, some VIP rooms. Men and women would basically just dance, drink, and party. I see. I've seen old footage on TV and stuff, but I guess disco clubs weren't so different than today's clubs. Oh, but I did notice something different about the women in the club footage I saw. Hmm, what is it? Well, the clothes, for one. The women in the footage were wearing these really tight dresses, and they had this weird thing in their hand. What was up with those dresses? And then there was that thing in their hands. Old dresses and item in their hand? Oh, yeah. It was a sailor dress and a katana. Obviously. It was a bodycon dress and a fan. Uh. Oh, I remember now. They were wearing bodycon dresses and rolling fans. A bodycon uh. dress? Yeah, it's short for body conscious. It was trend at the time. It was a, the trend at the time to show off the body and to hold a fan while dancing. I think the fans were called feather fans. <laughs> wow, I've heard of that before. Huh. I guess that's what happens to trends. I want to wear one of those to my audition. Kiryu-san, do you happen to have Ready. one? What? Why on earth would I have those? <sighs> oh, I suppose that's true. 
But I would love to try those things on for my audition to recreate the era. A body con dress and a feather fan in my hand. I'm um, curious on if you happen to find those items, would you mind bringing them back to me here, please? What? Why would I have to do your shopping for you? Please, I beg of you. I'm not saying it needs to happen for sure, but if you find them, I'd love to try them on, that's all. Fine. But who knows if I could ever get a hold of those, so I can't guarantee I'll come back. I understand. Thank you. How did I get roped into this? Oh, well, I guess if I find them somewhere, I'll bring them back. Now that I think about it, though, did I see those on sale at Don Quixote? That's just the catch-all for all quest lines in the game. If you gotta buy an item, and it's a little on the weird side, they're just shoveting Don Quixote. Oh, uh, yes, I, I've got them right here. You did? Really? It's not something I'd lie about. Here you go. Yes, they're just like the ones I saw women wearing in the video. Um, are you sure I can have these? Not like I'd have any use for them. Go for it. Thank you very much. Be right back. I'm going to try them on. Here you, son. Thank you for waiting. Uh oh. You look pretty good in that dress. Huh. Thank you. Hey, check huh? it out. Huh? That dress. <laughs> I gotta admit, that's really sexy. Oh. Well, question mark, question mark, question mark. Old man. Hmm. Hey, looks like you're starting to turn some heads. Uh, I guess so. This outfit is pretty flashy. How embarrassing. The women at the time probably weren't too embarrassed because everyone was wearing similar dresses. But when you're the only one, you kind of stand out. A lot. Well, if you're happy with it, why don't you change back? Good. Hey, what's going on? You see the guy back there? Hmm. Hmm. No, I won't change. If I'm too embarrassed just to wear it, then there's no way I'll be able to audition in it. I need to capture the spirit of the era. Uh, I'm dressed for dancing, so that's what I'm gonna do. Are you sure? Yes! I bet I can even pull off some of the moves I saw on that footage at home. I see. But you know you're gonna call a lot of attention to yourself, right? People might think you're crazy or weird. I'll be fine. Keep your eyes on me, Kiryu-san. I like this lady who's just wearing a fucking bathrobe. Sure. I should keep my distance so nobody thinks I'm crazy, too. Whoa. Whoa, whoa. Whoa. Whoa, whoa. It's a very iridescent fan, isn't it? Look at that motherfucker. Hey, what's going on here? What a cool <laughs> dress! Hey, you've got the moves, girl! Huh. She does dance pretty well. <laughs> You're having so much fun! Can I join you? In my fucking bathrobe? I know it's a coat, it looks like a fucking bathrobe, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. She's really got the crap moving. Maybe she's just the kind of person who draws others to her. Hmm. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. You're a great dancer. We should dance again soon. I'd love to. Okay, see ya. Losers. Thanks for waiting, Kiryu-san. <laughs> this just like randomly reminded me of something that happens in um, Yakuza 6, because I was just thinking about, man, She's got this outdated dress, Kiryu's got the outdated suit, and it made me think about this. There's these random things that can happen in the street, or where you'll get a message, and it'll just go like, ah, eh, something bad's happening here, go solve the problem. And Kiryu's like, sends a message like, I'll deal with this. Then you go deal with it. And they always say something after you've done it as well. And one of them was, hey, I saw the, whatever the problem was, got resolved. 
You are here. You're a great guy, man. Turns out not all heroes wear capes. Some of them wear really outdated suits. And I was like, wow. I have saved a guy's life, and this is what you're gonna do to me, you rude motherfuckers. Anyway, I just thought about it. It's kind of funny, you know. Hey, we got the whole crowd club going. Yes, the customers around me were really into it. I had so much fun. Dancing in this dress made me feel like I could do things I wouldn't normally try. I bet the women who lived in the days of disco felt the same way. I see. Well, they say clothes make the attitude. Yes, and it's all thanks to you for giving me the bodycon dress and feather fan. I can't thank you enough. No problem. Excuse me, ma'am. Can I have a word? Uh, I'm sure. Uh, who's this guy? That's a lovely outfit you've got on. My outfit? You mean this bodycon dress? Oh, so you know what it's called, huh? Of course. It's short for body conscious, I'm told. Oh, you know your stuff. You look pretty young, but you must be familiar with the bubble economy era, huh? Haha, <laughs> <laughs> sort of. I know about how people used to wave 10,000 yen bills to hail a cab, anyway. Oh, you're right. But do you know why? Oh, God. Yeah, that's fine. Well, unlike today, the cab drivers could be more selective about their passengers, so to flag them down, people needed to indicate they had the money to go far, right? <laughs> Aha, that's correct. Then you must know about the young men who would drive their lady friends around instead of using the cabs. Oh, you mean the leg lads. <laughs> there were also grub buds, keeper kuns, and gift guys. Pretty sad nicknames, but pretty interesting times. Well, that's just wonderful. Hold on just a second. Who are you and why are you asking her these questions? Oh, excuse me. I'm a film director. The name's Yamada. A film director? Yeah. Yes, I came to the club to see if I could scout talent for my next project. Queen, Disco Queen of Love. That's when I saw this young lady dancing in the bodycon dress. Hey, oh yeah, isn't that the movie? Yes, that's the movie I was going to audition for in this dress. Is that so? Well, that certainly makes everything a lot easier then. Ayasan, would you like to be cast in my next film? Huh? Are you serious? Ah. Nah, I just like to fuck with people. Yeah, you've really captured the essence of the bubble era, and your charisma, 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 has me quite taken. Oh my gosh. Are you like, sure someone like me is qualified to play the lead uh. role? Yep. I think you're perfect. Thank you very much. If you'd take me, I'd love to do it. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Huh, that's some good fortune. I feel like I'm walking on air. curious san I can't thank you enough for your help. I didn't do much. You were the one who studied hard and let yourself cut loose on the dance floor in front of everyone. You deserve it. Thank you. But I can't leave without thanking you in some way. Please, take this. Yeah, it's weapons. How exciting. That'll definitely get used. Wow, I'm so happy I think I'm going to cry. Ha ha! But be warned, I can be kind of a bear on set. Get all your tears out now, okay? Oh, of course, sir. You can be as strict as with me as you want need to be, Daddy. Ah. Great attitude. Let's make a wonderful Hi. film. Okay. Well, I'll get going then. Looking forward to seeing you on the big screen. Please do, Kiryu-san. Thank you very much. Very, very much, actually. The bubble economy, huh? I wonder if things will ever be like that time again. Hmm. Nah, no, probably not, though. Well, let's go find another side quest. Alright, Takashi, I'm here. So are the police, apparently. I came because I heard Takashi might be here, but is he? All right, there he is. Right, no, a little to the left. No, 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 Kiryu, a little to the right. There, there you go, there you go. Looks like I found him. Now I just have to give him the matching bowls I got from Ichi. Boy. Hey. Huh? Oh, you're the guy from before. Kiryu-san, right? We owe you a lot for what you did. We decided to leave town. I'll never forget what you did for us, but it's time we moved on. Yeah, I see. So what's up? You came all the way out here for a reason, right? Not really, just passing by. I'm here because I want to give you two something. Cool. 
Uh, matching bowls. These are for me. I don't get it. Those bowls. Could it be? Kyoka, you know what these mean this means? They're the ones I gave to my father. Kiryu-san, where'd you get these? I got them from a guy named Ichi of the Otobe family. He said you'd understand if you saw them. I see. Dad kept these bowls after all these years. When I was a kid, I gave these to my dad to make a point about how he'd been ignoring my mom all the time. You wouldn't use matching bowls unless you were eating together, right? I'll never forget the sadness in his face when he opened them up. Is this his way of giving us his blessing? We'll have to take care of these, right, Kyoka-chan? Both of us, together. Takashi, heart. Kiryu-san, like I said earlier, we're about to leave town. We'll go somewhere far away and start over. I want to make sure they know that I got the message from Kyoka's father. I'm taking this seriously now. Could you tell him that? Yeah, got it. I have an idea. Could you give this to Ichi-san? Kyoka's ring. A ring. Once we settle down, we'll come, we'll come and visit Dad, and he can return it to me when we do. Maybe. We'll have a new family member by then. Heart. Kyoka! <laughs> You're so funny! <laughs> Kiryu-san, thank you for coming all the way out here. No problem, dude. Alright, so alright, we gotta go over that way anyway. There's a side quest in West Park we're gonna do next.